everyone, and welcome to Humane, Human Humane Architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii. I am this program's co-host. I'm DeSoto Brown, and I work at Bishop Museum as a historian. And joining us all the way from Germany, his native land, is our host, Martin Despang. And let's see if we can see Martin on the screen with me. There he is. Greetings. Aloha. There he is. Hello. Hello. So what's our show about Hello. today? Well, first of all, Happy New Year to Solo and everyone. So it might be a great one. So if we can get the first slide up here, we can see what we're, where we're going. And so uh, always around the holidays, I'm sneaking out. So I have to uh, accommodate certain things as our PI mobile, uh, which is uh, graciously uh, uh, taken care of by uh, Alexei and Nicola and Lucas at their 1315 Alamoana, which is one of our favorite buildings by Yamazaki. And the car and the building have been designed or gestalted, as we like to prefer to say, around the same time. And the other sort of preparation is me flying half around the world. So at the bottom, we can see uh, me at a stopover at uh, San Francisco International Airport and walking by, as other people are, an Hermes store. And next slide, because why is that relevant to us? Uh, we're getting closer. So where is that, DeSoto? Well, the picture on the bottom left is actually in Berlin, and it is a famous street called the Kudam, and that is uh, was West Berlin's main shopping street, particularly during the time between East Berlin and West Berlin. That's when they showed off the littering excesses of capitalism and how wonderful it was in comparison to drab and tiresome old East Berlin. And when we look up in the mm -hmm. upper right corner, we see a fake Berlin street, which was uh, created for the television series Lost. And it's actually Merchant Street in downtown Honolulu, but it does in fact look similar to the real Berlin street that we see in the picture on the lower left with Martin and his sons and their respective girlfriends slash wives. There you go. And we stopped by in Berlin where Joey and uh, Clara currently reside on their voyage to uh, their culinary cross-cultural crossover, which we've been reporting about and updating you guys frequently. So next slide here. Um, I, however, then went back to uh, uh, exotic escapism expert Susanna here in Munich and uh, every you know major city probably in the world has this sort of Lixi a magnificent mile or a sunset boulevard or however they're called this one here in Munich is called Maximilian Straße which with all the visits and bells of the exclusive as you can tell and these are obviously not current uh, climatic conditions these ones I took last summer during my sabbatical here. This is summer uh, situation. So um, let's go to the next slide, go to where it's always summer, and you tell us how this picture is related to the previous ones. So, Well, what we're saying is that even in Waikiki, which we're saying is our magnificent mile of a sort, there used to be a German-themed restaurant called the Hofbrau. And in the upper picture, you can just see the Hofbrau sign on the left in a picture of Kalakaua Avenue in 1963 when President Kennedy's motorcade was coming through. Well, today on Kalakaua Avenue, we have a lot of very high-end stores. One of them is our own, one of our Hermes stores, because we've got three actually on the island of Oahu. And that's my mother and my sister inside the new Hermes store after it was remodeled in the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center. And in fact, that's what we're gonna be looking at for today's show. Let's check this out and go to the next slide. And uh, well, before we do that, we have to say, the audience might say, wait a minute, aren't you these kind of inclusive guys who have always pitched for the proletarian? What does that have to do with high-end fashion stores? But we're also um, sort of, obligated to talk or self obligate us to talk about the legacy of tropical modernism as you were doing a keynote speech here at the national local almost symposium so in that capacity to the next slide we were curious about the the store 
And uh, this is when uh, Suzanne was there last time, and we were very curious. We, we said last minute we should have put in a picture of Talking Berlin when Crystal was wrapping the rice talk. So here that reminds us of that, that big sort of gift wrapping around the construction side. And next slide is we got even more excited about when it was basically uh, naked it or you know the tarp been taken off because usually we, we, we could have expected from past practices to it having been cheesecake or Tiffany so heavily you know have put heavy makeup on but not so much here we we're thinking they're almost stripping it naked again so we got overly excited about it next slide uh, so it pretty much became and, and you've seen it too. So share a little bit with me uh, your impressions along this picture here. So. Well, one of the interesting things that I really noticed in this picture is that there's an interior green wall. Now, not all of that I think is actual living greenery, but there is some real foliage in there. On the outside, mm -hmm. outside the window that you can see on the left, however, is real greenery. And we're gonna be seeing more of that in the form of living vines that are growing there and against this green mm -hmm. background both inside and outside we've got this nice sort of skeletal floating staircase that we're going to look at more closely in the pictures that follow yeah yeah and the top right we referenced we did a show about tropical ascending and descending so this one here made us think this is in, in along the lines of that tradition and your 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 presentation was about the the sort of the uh, continuation of the evolution of uh, innovation on the island. Absolutely so this one here right. seems to be right. in line with that. So let's go to the next slide. And uh, you know, more in particular, this reminded us of your architect that you had the chance to grow up in a building by Osipov, and not right. the top right is his Outbreak at Canoe Club. So these stairs are, you know, not attached to the side of the beam, but sort of balancing over it. And it's got this very delicate, intricate, and very sophisticated sort of tapering back of these. In fact, I think they're actually bamboo laminated. Uh, yeah. So there's some craft coming back that we're, if, that we like from the past, if that, that we've been seeing diminishing, unfortunately. So there's some hope here it coming back, right? right. And let's go to the next slide. And this goes through the whole detailing of the store, the guardrails here, as opposed to doing one post for the structures, taking this double post. So this is also a very mid-century theme, right? Yes. That they've been using to make things look thinner and more filigree. Right. So uh, another kind of renaissance or renaissance, right, in detail. Correct. Correct. Next Thank slide. You. Yeah, and so the, the staircase reminds me, you know, of of almost like it has a sort of a jungly feel, right? You're basically floating. Uh, it's very filigree, very dematerialized, and and it feels very lofty. And and on the outside, uh, we can see what you already indicated. We can see some some jungle creeping up on the glass. And let's check this out further here on the next slide. So here they are, and um, they're, they're, as of now, we had to always say, you know, the most innovative green, literally and figuratively building is actually the TJ Maxx and Kakaako reference yeah. on the top right. Now we have another one here, which um, some of us think is, is even better um, as far as detailing and sophistication, but it's still kept pretty simple. So it's, it's not that. Uh, they're, they're green walls, they're way more artificial. I mean, the one on the inside is a green wall, but it's a very sort of sad artificial one because it's sort of drip irrigated and, and sort of very artificial, even though it's natural. Uh, but this one here is, is pretty much, you know, pretty simple and original, what, what plants like to do. If you choose the right plants, they like to crawl up on buildings, especially in the tropics, right? Yes. And next slide uh, it shows us that the green is not just creeping up all over the glass, uh, but also here in front of the concrete. And so, you know, they're, they're, we had the reference to a sad example of retrofitting of, a, of a, another concrete building, which is the Gold Bond building um, on Nimitz Highway. Uh, this one is luckily a good example where you can see, oh, this is an interesting combination of, of systems. And of course, uh, next slide, um, us, 
being um yeah we we brought other experts there on the right is blended canista con who we thought and we talked about in the show you particularly has done one of the most progressive buildings out of concrete in honolulu currently and he was interested in the building and he took his buddy richard lowe who's another previous guest of ours who's mr tarzan and they both approved and endorsed the building and its ambitions and next slide yeah, and I want to just point out too quickly that they kept the original brutalist chipped concrete exterior. They did not oh, cover yeah. it up or smooth it out. Uh -huh. So it's a nice yeah. contrast of the foliage to that concrete. Yeah, absolutely. And next slide. Um, and and there's this is again where you and your mother were before. And now we can see what these horizontal lines are. They are actually louvers. They're put over the glass. So you get these kind of interesting slides, views from inside out and next slide. And from outside in, and this is our typical mandatory biochromatic check. You can basically see that the building, which is at the bottom left of the Google map here, uh, is basically getting uh, some east sun in the morning. However, not so much because the sun is pretty low and the buildings around are pretty tall. And then you get some southern sun. Uh, due to the location, you don't get much of a, a dreary uh, western sun. So um, next slide. What the louvers actually do, usually it's all for the spectacle. There's no performance in retail design, but this one here actually tries to look pretty. And it also works pretty well because as you can tell, and we maybe we jump to the next slide here, we can see in detail that this is somewhere, you know, later morning, you can basically see how the concrete of this, uh, the, the, the panels, the spandrels, the balustrades uh, of the building, uh, the structural ones are basically pretty much in the shade. So the thing does actually a performative job besides its iconic sort of look to lure and, and I noticed um, something else. Frugal people into the building. Yeah. I noticed something else too that there's a there's an interesting contrast between the strong horizontal aspect of the louvers and the vertical aspect of the vine growing up and the structure that's there for that. So you've got these two kind of conflicting but interestingly juxtaposed vertical and horizontal elements. Yeah. No, you're right. Absolutely fine composition. And next slide here. So um, you see another iconic building reflecting in the glass at the bottom. This is Pete Wimberley's uh, Bank of Hawaii from 1966 that we're loving and continue to report on. And you see um, maybe an homage to that because that one has a screen that has to some level uh, a performative aspect as well. And at the top, you see that the louver panels are actually sort of not one plane, but actually sort of staggered. And next slide. Uh, makes us discover that and think about what the, this is for. So you got this pretty huge panels, and this reminds us of Tropic here Rockwood, who always offers this class about prototyping screens. And so this seems almost like a student of his, you know, took his class and basically became inspired to be the, the project architect on this project here. And the next slide um, is, um, well, and, and these panels are actually there for um, the purpose of cleaning the glass. If they would be fixed, uh, you couldn't really clean the glass anymore. So they're actually on uh, on rails, on tracks, and they can slide them away for the for the purpose of cleaning the windows. And they reminded us because, after all, Hermes, as we should mention, is a French-based company, right? So, and the French have these kind of very typical and sort of characteristic for their climate and their culture, these shutters. And these shutters have been incorporated in other classical architectural pieces and tell us a little bit more where and when to so the longer picture. Well, see. We, we see some of those here in Honolulu. We certainly see them in the lobby of the um, Kahala Hilton Hotel and our friend Ron, who was one of the designers for the company that built that and the architect who designed it, uh, Killingsworth, was there to tell us about that. We also see them in the Hale Kulani Hotel, the rebuilt new current Hale Kulani Hotel from the 1980s. And we see them at the Harbor Square condo. That's the one in the up the top upper right uh, corner, which is also a Killingsworth design. And what's the one in the middle on the right? The, 
middle on the right is actually the uh, converted uh, to the new Halle Puna, which is sort of an appendix of the Halle Kalani, which right. Ron Lindgren designed as the Waikiki Park Hotel, right? right. So again, uh, another sort of continuation of the evolution of post-contact innovation pieces of architecture, right? Yes. And let's go to the next slide here, which we like to see. And here you can see how this the screen wraps around the building. And then basically the one on the right is sort of this more hideous sort of like add on to the thing. But but again, here it leaves it pretty uh, pure and clean, as you were pointing out. The next slide gives us a, a whole view of their signage. And again, as you said, and after all, again, being French, uh, this style that the uh, original Royal Hawaiian Center has, we uh, categorize as brutalist, and brutalist comes from the same country that Hermes is headquartered, that's France, French. And here we have Le Corbusier on the right. And here again, uh, Hermes is sort of uh, celebrating or re celebrating that sort of national legacy we can almost say but putting the single letters on it and having them backlit and that we're basically enhancing the uh the bush hammered uh rugged concrete rather than basically what they've been doing in the past being ashamed of it and putting big cheesecake makeup on right 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 so this is very promising so next slide here and again, as, as it appears from um, sort of across the street, it, it seems to be more subtle, right? It's not in your face. It's not like the Tiffany around the corner or the Cheesecake or the other ones. It's very subtle. And you got to, you know, the closer you get, as it is in very good architecture, the better it gets. So let's go. Yeah, you know what else, yeah. too, it, that's, that's noticeable mm -hmm. in this picture is because it's not in the full sun, the appearance changes from day to night. So it's lit from the outside, yeah. it looks quite different. When it is lit from the interior, as you see in this picture, the appearance is very different. It no longer looks like a brown exterior, but you see the warmth of the lights coming through it. Absolutely. So let's move to the, I think we got to move a little bit more quickly here. We're running out of time, but uh, I want to chip in here. Uh, Hermes has been known for uh, doing really good architecture for many of these stores, this is the Tokyo store by the acclaimed colleague uh, Renzo Piano that Neil Abercrombie was, uh, when we had a review with him at school, he was saying, you know, maybe we should get a Renzo Piano building in Honolulu. And I, I agree with that. This is a very delicate store out of a glass block that sort of is an abstract, very modern way, reminiscent of the flacons, which are these glass bottles where the perfume is in. Let's go to the next slide. And we've been inspired by that when we, believe it or not, uh, once we were uh, invited to participate in a competition for the facade of the mall. Can you imagine that? And so this is actually at the top and at the bottom is our main train station uh, from the uh, 1890s in Hanover, Germany, my hometown. And next slide is uh, us and previous works here. This is me post-occupancy evaluating our train stations, one out of glass block and next slide is a colleague of mine from Hanover who has done this sort of more uh, intercity uh, train station also out of blue glass blocks. So we both had a background in this material. And next slide, um, that is why we were suggesting and proposing to give this new mall a skirt out of glass block that was sort of customized by Vetro Arredo, which is an Italian glass block manufacturer in a color is similar to the brick of the adjacent buildings that at night it glows and it becomes this sort of beacon in this amber color next slide um and you know we this is interesting because this is the same um uh, at the top right renzo piano has done this cultural center in new caledonia in 1998 uh, with these sort of very ticky looking huts. And this is what uh, the main big pictures is. This is what um, Hermes decided to basically equip its main, uh, one of its main stores in its main city, Paris. And it's interesting that we didn't get these sort of very Polynesian looking huts, right? Right. They For just have so square next... and modern, yeah. Exactly. Next slide. So they, they treated us um, very modern. And here is another of their stores. And interesting, you have a Brutalist building in the background, and then you have a, another kind of louvered theme for the Hermes store. Next slide. 
And again, if I would ever do ancestry research, you know, Despang, there is a good, a couple of good wines in France that are called Despagne. And to me, the store reminds me a little bit of the, the, the brown wine bottles that give the wine that glow, right? That sort of mysterious glow. And that's what the color, uh, the brownish uh, blinds and the light and the concrete gives us sort of this mysterious and rich and, and very sort of elegant kind of lighting and, and, and color feel. And next slide. Um, again, uh, how obviously our bet conscious us being the inclusive guys, how can you apply the sort of, and we had quite some trouble, we have to admit, to say, how can we justify we pick up on something as exclusive as that? And we basically concluded and encouraged by Tropic Here Rockwood to say, well, if there's if there isn't any other good stuff somewhere else, we might go for what we get, right? And the Hermes store seems to be one of the hottest and best things currently. And this is an example how we indeed could sort of apply these screens that we had prototyped in our critical practice on projects at the top left. And we had suggested to do this for the stratosphere, the Nye Groves, which is a very inclusive project of stacking cargo steel and converting it into housing for the so many in need in our island as referenced in many shows on the top right. Next slide. And uh, there's another project going on uh, that is inspired by this one here. And this is a, a, a doctor of architecture thesis at our school by Aaron Chow. And the committee is comprised of um, a tropical tutor, Bill Chapman, and Mrs. Easy Breezy, uh, Kaili Chun. And they're both advising. And what we hear is that they're going to retrofit the School of Architecture, which we have been reporting about you with John and Mayumi Hara, and that through unfortunate circumstances didn't turn out the way it should have been. So this could bring back peace to the building by them jungleizing it. So that's uh, a good suggestion. Um, next slide. And so uh, this is a reference to when we were initially reporting on the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center and basically concluding and saying, well, uh, bring the thing back to its old glory. It's like a car from the 70s that gain in value and you better, you know, treat it as a collectible. So we were literally saying strip all that. I think we, I literally said build uh, bullshit uh, away and bring back its beautiful face. And then this here seems to like someone finally might even listen to us, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what they've been doing. And, and next slide is, um, is where you currently are, DeSoto, right? That's correct. Is, well, uh, we just, we, we, we're in a new studio now for Think Tech, and you are pointing out that this building that we're in is, or that I am in, is actually got a performative brise soleil or screen on the exterior of it that isn't just decorative, but it is a brutalist building. It's of the brutalist era, and we can admire it because as you like to say, it's a performative exterior and not purely a decorative one. Mm -hmm. And something like that inspired us to do what you see on the top left, which we've been talking about, what we call the tropical textile. And again, it's very much along the lines of Le Corbusier with his street screens that he designed for tropical climates um, and also for France. And so this is, this is very appropriate. Yeah. So it's a performative scre uh, screen and, and skin that we would like to see showing up on, on more buildings. And there's hardly ever, I mean, you guys had, had to have to cover up the window because of studio, you know, recording reasons, but otherwise there is hardly ever any sun hitting your glass and your window. So you always stay cool inside and that we find that really cool. So next slide um, is that it's a little longer walk to studio now, which you just experienced today in your premiere, right? And it will be for me because I will be back today in a week and we'll be both sitting in the new studio. And these are our PI mobiles again that um, the, the store um, West Marine is kind to let us park there for that little while. So here are these kind of German young timers here who are very easy breezy because they're convertibles, but at times when they're parked and the showers come through, they need this little, uh, in my case, the blue tarp. 
And, you know, the walk to studio is always a procession for me because I walk by the dwelling um, communities of our urban um, nomads. So you can see at the bottom left, uh, another green tarp right next to where I park, which is way more essential because we got people living under these. And so if you walk further, and that gets us to our final slide here, next slide and final slide, is that usually um, the, the condition I will see next week is unfortunately the one at the very bottom right, where you can actually see our building in the back, uh, next uh, to the left in the distance. So that's kind of the distance we, we or I walk. But, you know, before that, we saw that beautiful tree that you see on the two pictures here. And that is what we call tree architecture. This is what, you know, it's comfortable under there. So the urban nomads had a good time there. They felt well. And I don't think, you know, anyone would have ever recognized them as you see in the big picture. They're so camouflaged under the tree. But some people must have thought, you know, they should go away. So in order to make them go away, they cut down the tree. And I found this really, really ironic. And so we want to promise the audience to keep continuing to talk about these people more than the rich people. And so at the top right is sort of a preview of that we're going to look into our cargo courtyard cabana theme and we're going to cluster them pretty soon. So stay tuned on that. We will keep you updated. So with that, I think we might be at the end of airtime, DeSoto, so. Yeah, just about, and I think to just, to just reiterate is what you said, I think good design is not necessarily just for elite people or poor people, it's for everybody. And if we look at the Hermes yeah. store and say, there are elements that are applicable to other buildings, even if they are for, as you said, rehousing the urban nomads, that makes them valid nonetheless. There we are. Absolutely. Okay, well, next time we're gonna Thank be you, you're going to be back in Honolulu. I'll be in Honolulu. We'll figure out how we're going to do the show. But until then, thank you, everybody, for watching uh, Human Humane Architecture on Think Tech Hawaii. Martin Despang, DeSoto Brown. See you again next time. Until then, aloha. Mm -hmm. Here he goes.